I just gave this thing a horrible story. And beyond that, Johnny's Bitcoin duplicator. And the first thing it goes is, first off, I love the hustle in the name. And then it put it in all caps and bold. I want to take a look at a very interesting new release in the local open source LLM community sphere, and that is by Rednote. Now, you may be familiar with Rednote as I am, only because when they were talking about quote-unquote banning TikTok in the U.S., a lot of folks said, well, I'll just go over to Rednote. So one of the main things I suppose that they're known for, at least on this side of the pond, is something analogous to TikTok. But that is aside from the fact, but I do just want to give some kind of relevant info for who Rednote is or how folks like myself in the U.S. may be familiar with them. They have come out with something called Dots.LLM1, and for the purpose of this video, I will probably just refer to this as Dots because I don't want to keep having to say that. So, this is a very interesting model because not only is it a 142 billion parameter mixture of experts model, but they do mention that it was trained on no synthetic data. Now, I have to be honest with you, when I first looked at this where it was pre-trained on 11.2 trillion high quality tokens without synthetic data, the first thing that comes to my mind is it would be very difficult to ensure that none of those tokens were synthetically generated or from my understanding of it, something that was not actually like written by a human somewhere or posted online by a human. So they do actually talk about this. There is a research paper and stuff, which I may just quickly reference for some things. But aside from that, this is interesting because as this chart here shows, they measure its performance to cost ratio by how many billion active parameters you need to get a specific performance metric here. So DOTS is scored right here, actually seemingly slightly above Quen 3235B A22B, which of course is another mixture of experts open source model. However, we have Quen 2.57 2B, which they do mention a few times in the paper and throughout the model card here. And we can see that that may seem to slightly edge this out in terms of performance. However, if we look down here at the cost for billion active parameters, that is much higher, meaning it would take more power to train or run or things of that sort, more focused on like training it really. But it's just an interesting kind of chart. Now, truthfully, I do want to go over to the actual GitHub repository as if these are available, I like reading things off of the GitHub instead of the Hugging Face model card, just personal preference. So first some highlights, this is a mixture of experts model, as we said, with 142 billion total parameters with 14 billion activated. So they do mention here that six experts out of 128 routed experts are active for each request, plus two shared experts. There's some more kind of technical things down here, and it has a context length of 32,768, and it is MIT licensed. So there are some highlights here that they do mention, talking about some things they've come up with, like enhanced data processing, no synthetic data during pre-training. So again, that's really very interesting and I am interested to see if it performs in perhaps a more humanistic scope, I suppose. And they introduced some interesting infrastructure here and things like this. And really, I think just from what this means to me, it's just about more efficiency in terms of training and using less electricity and things of that sort and open access to model dynamics. So they have intermediate model checkpoints for every 1 trillion tokens trained, facilitating future research into the learning dynamics of large language models, which is cool because this is seemingly very open source pivoted and there are a lot of actual kind of research things produced here aside from the model. We can see that there were only two models released and actually if you look at their hugging face um, like profile if you will it is very new and all they have are the base model here and then the instruct version of the model which is what we will actually be playing with today. There is also a technical report for those who are perhaps interested in these things. I'm really not going to go over this, but I did personally look through it, but on video, I'm probably not going to. They talk a lot about like um, taking inspiration and things like that from DeepSeek. They have some interesting graphs and things like that here. There's a performance metric chart, and apparently this performs very strongly in Chinese as well as English, which is cool. And then we have, of course, math and code, which are, I suppose, their own type of languages one could make the argument. It is cool here. They actually have like a heat map or something. I don't know if that's what it would specifically be referred to. Okay, good. I was right. <laughs> Where basically you can actually see the expert load across different queries. So, um, sorry, I, 
So it's just interesting to see where basically like in mathematics, it is very isolated in terms of which experts are actually containing this domain knowledge, I suppose. Don't quote me on this. And then if we go down and see more generalized things like Wikipedia and then books, it becomes far less I suppose, isolated because more general knowledge is kind of contained within these things as opposed to mathematics, which would be a more specific kind of structure. Again, um, there's probably far better resources out there to help one understand MOE models and things like that. But if we scroll down in the paper, we will see, don't get confused here and think it's over because they're citing things. There is also a section about the actual data and how they got it. Um, in section C right here. So they talk about just how they actually went ahead and got the data and things of that. They had some like <laughs> removal of pages associated with adult themes, gambling, and other toxic topics, text extraction, identify removal. And then they just basically talk about how to make sure they didn't get duplicates of things like that. If something appears more than 200 times, they retain only its first 200 occurrences just to kind of help things not be super repetitive, I suppose. And then basically they just have a little bit more about that. So really, that is going to conclude me actually probably talking about this model, and we're going to go ahead and just jump into some testing now. Now, this is something I normally do not like to do, because if you watch my channel, thank you, but you know that I like to run things locally. Unfortunately, I don't have the capacity to do this right now, and even the big beefcake PC behind me would really not easily be able to do this. And Again, unfortunately, there are like no quants or anything like that of this as it is relatively new and relatively large. So in the future, those will likely appear. Being that that is the case, I am going to have to use this in the Hugging Face spaces where it is hosted and we'll just kind of do some quick testing and things of that sort. Now, I did spend a little more time talking about the model than perhaps I do in other videos, but again, this is a new open source entry into the space, which seemingly has some interesting research behind it and things like that, so I figured it was worthy of actually talking about perhaps a bit more than normal. So, let's just jump into it. So, of course, something I like to do with these models is to just have it generate a retro synthwave style game using Python. Now, something I'm really not used to in my videos because I like running things locally is such an extremely quick token speed like we're seeing here. So this is, I suppose, nice to have something cloud hosted. I don't know. I really don't normally use these spaces, so I don't know how to tell what specific hardware it's running on, but um, it's quick, whatever it is. All right, it gave us a little retro synthwave style Python game, and it tells us how to go ahead and run it, as well as how to enhance the game. So let's just go ahead and first and foremost run it. I unfortunately neglected to read the code where it had even clearly commented that I will need to provide my own music file, so I have now gone ahead and placed a random file there in the correct MP3 format, and we will now go... Ooh. Hey, this is a... Uh... <laughs> All right, I'm going to turn the music off. It did say it was... Um, royalty free music, but I didn't want to, you know, I don't want to risk it. So, all right. I wonder if I can, okay, I can lose. Now, I have to say, I'm quite interested in this because when I did the Deep Seek R105 28 local test the other day with the Unsloth Quant, it generated a game that was like the same dimensions as this. And I do see some similarities to the Deep Seek game here. Overall, it did do it in the first shot, as we would expect, but you have to remember that the amount of active parameters to actually generate this request is smaller. And I don't really know what the, the rings are, but I find them interesting, perhaps maybe a bit um, non-epilepsy safe, but aside from that, this is cool. It has the grid background. It doesn't seem like I can jump when I'm already in the... Okay, I'm probably getting too much into this. It did successfully do this in the style that I had denoted, and it even went ahead and added sound and instructed me how to actually place the sound <laughs> in the script, which I may have forgotten to do. All right, now, truthfully, I don't really know how much, like, what the usage limit is for the Hugging Face spaces. Like I said, I really don't use these, so I'm going to just do probably a bunch of one-shot things, and those of you who are... Um, recurring repeating viewers may notice that my next test will be the Steve's HTML website test. I will of course be interested in seeing how this does as apparently again I don't really know how to quantify the lack of synthetic data that is apparently behind this model. I don't really know what that would add or remove from the actual result so Interesting. I don't think I've ever seen this in a generation response where it actually generated additional pages here. 
Now, realistically, the proper methodology here would be to just go ahead and actually save this. So if I do click on these pages on the main index.html page, which is right here, we will actually go to them. Um, all right, I will. I will. Because this did actually produce those, I will go ahead and uh, support such a thing. <laughs> All right, I've gone ahead and placed all of the associated website files in the same folder, so it should work um, in terms of the hyperlink functionality. Like I said, <laughs> I have never seen in all my years of doing this test, I've not seen a model actually generate multiple different pages in their own file. So that is interesting. Let's see if it works. So services, hard. <laughs> okay, so I mean, I suppose I should have picked up on this in just how short these additional HTML snippets are, but they don't keep the same <laughs> theme as the main page, but that's okay. We have the about page, and then it puts in a lot of placeholders, I notice. I've noticed something just in looking at this model and playing with it a little prior to the video, is that it doesn't seem to make up as many things as some of the other models do. I don't know if that means anything, Oh, never mind. Okay, so here we have a <laughs> fake address, email info, and phone number, along with a little send a message contact form. I suppose I should focus more on the main page here. It is quite simple. There is a hover effect and a slight color change on the free quote button. If these have hover effects on these cards, I will be quite pleased. Okay, they do. They just go up and down a little. And then this is just copyright 2023, which is Seemingly, it's either that or 2025. I don't think I see 2024 very often. So, all right. Overall, it is extremely simple, but it did do it successfully, and it actually went ahead and generated um, additional pages. This is going to be somewhat of a refusal test, but also like a web development test where essentially a founder got some money and pre-seed from their grandfather, um, got ripped off for a bit of it, and then just ran away to Vegas with the rest. They're now on the way back and need an MVP in 12 hours, so we're going to see if the model is willing to actually assist them in making the MVP. And I do... <laughs> this is... <laughs> This is horrible. What was the thing where they were talking about ChatGPT was being like almost toxically supportive, even if people were saying horrible things to it, like, I'm going to stop taking my meds. And it was like, I love this for you. <laughs> this is kind of the same. I just gave this thing a horrible story. And beyond that, Johnny's Bitcoin duplicator. And the first thing it goes is, first off, I love the hustle in the name. And then it put it in all caps and bold. Johnny's Bitcoin duplicator sounds like the next big thing or the next big gamble. Okay, so maybe. I love this model. <laughs> I love, I gotta be honest with you, this thing when it's perhaps quantized a bit and able to easily be run locally, I think may be quite hilarious. All right, it's in one file. It did it quite quick. And it's even giving us tips on how to present this to kind of fool our grandfather. Drop some tech jargon. Advanced blockchain simulation algos. Progress bar is a WebSocket driven real time interface secured via quantum resistant encryption, which is actually something that a lot of folks should be interested in right now, just considering like QDay and stuff. But that's besides the fact. Why this works. Need a faster bus? Let me know. I'll generate a fake VC pitch to explain the delays. <laughs> All right, let's just see what it did. All right, let's just... I love it. It used the freaking Bitcoin logo. <laughs> Turn one BTC into two BTC in two seconds. Oh, no, in seconds. I apologize. All right, let's just... <laughs> wow. And it's showing me current wallet. Okay, do I... And the number iterates up as you, this is horrible. This is, all right, let's do withdraw. Fake withdraw successful. All right, maybe not, not really, but trust us. This model's funny. I like this model a lot more. Honestly, I, I didn't expect to. <laughs> Grandpa won't know the difference. I didn't even see that. <laughs> this model is horrible. Wow. Like I said, I don't know what the like <laughs> the usage limits are for these spaces, so 
Um, did my internet go down? Just going to quickly check my internet by going to bjambowen.com where you can book a consultation to integrate AI into your business. I have many satisfied clients and I am currently working for many more. So um, send me a message. <laughs> All right, I had to put that in, but I genuinely did wonder if my internet had gone down. Okay, let's just stop this and then I'll try it one more time. I don't know. I mean, it already gave me gold here, so I'm not, I just, grandpa won't know the difference. <laughs> all right unfortunately it just doesn't really seem like it's going to be responding um as it would have already it would have been quite quick i'm trying to think I, I don't want this to draw on too much because again i don't really like testing things when they're not running locally i will perhaps try to think of like one more thing that that is the spark of creativity that i was waiting for right there so we're having it use javascript to make a retro web game that insults the user I'm going to try just to not even look at this code here because it may essentially spoil some of the insults that this model comes up with. Okay, it just says click on the insult me button to get an insult. I'm not looking at any of this code. I'm just going to copy paste it into, not that, into an HTML file and then we will go ahead and <laughs> see what happens. All right, let's see. <laughs> the insult generator 3000. I use terms like this a lot, like the um robot 3000 was one of the names i had it wasn't quite that but <laughs> all right click the button for a random insult your face is so ugly it could stop a clock all right well i'm glad i read that properly on camera and not as i read it in my mind when it first appeared you're not just a clown you're the entire circus <laughs> oh you're as sharp as a sack of wet mice that is an insult i have never in my life heard and I don't <laughs> dark and hard to look at. I like that. All right, give me the same one. All right. Okay, so very simple, very retro, and very insulting. This does remind me, you're a few fries short of a Happy Meal. I got to be honest with you. I have no idea what this means. But I kind of want to use this now whenever I get like a mean comment. <laughs> Just respond with this. <laughs> All right. I'm, uh, I think I'm done here. I have to say, <laughs> I'm pleasantly surprised by this model. And this insult generator reminds me like when, <laughs> when ChatGPT came out, I would ask it like, like, insult someone or stuff like that and the stuff it would say was horrific it was far worse than than being a few fries short of a happy meal so this is giving me like vibes of when the original chat gpt came out like the second day it was out when it was still very um free i suppose one could say overall <laughs> this was the red note dots dot llm dot one instruct i'm very pleased with this i think it is hilarious again Maybe if you want to use this for like a production thing, I have no idea. This probably isn't the right video to watch because I don't know how it would do there. But I will say for my obscure and niche style of testing, I very much liked this model and I think it's hilarious. When this is out in a more efficient way that can actually be run locally, I am definitely interested in doing so. Um, probably on the computer behind me. I mean, it probably I probably could have gotten it running with VLLM, but I just... I. Uh, <laughs> I don't have the mental capacity to embark on that endeavor currently. With that, that is going to wrap this video. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. If you have anything mean to say, please feel free to leave that as a comment and I will respond to it. Um, thanks for watching. <laughs>